okay let's start with the is curve and to derive the is curve we need to understand that we make a very basic assumption which is that aggregate income is equal to aggregate expenditure the formula for aggregate income is consumption plus savings plus taxes and this is in case you have trouble understanding this you can look at your individual situation the amount of money that you consume so money that you spent on consumption plus what you save plus what you pay in taxes is your overall income and aggregate that for the whole society and that effectively is the aggregate income for society then aggregate expenditure as you've seen before is consumption which is the expenditure from consumers plus i which is investment expenditure from business plus government expenditure plus net expenditure by foreigners which is x minus m now using some basic algebra we can show that this simplifies to the following s minus i is equal to g minus t plus x minus m all we are saying here is the excess savings so private savings minus investment goes to fund a government deficit plus it helps support a trade surplus now we are going to use <coughs> this equation to come up with our is curve and we are going to essentially show two graphs here on the top what we'll do is show income versus first we will plot income against s minus i okay now the core point here is that as incomes rise what happens to savings and investment and we can just do that up here so as income goes up what happens to savings when income goes up we will say that overall savings go up and investment also uh, investments also go up but we will uh, what we have seen empirically is that investments generally go up less than the increase in savings so if the increase in savings is more than the increase in investment then we can say that s minus i must be going up when income goes up so if we are plotting s minus i against y then we have a upward sloping curve so that is our s minus i curve now what about g minus t plus x minus m so let's use a different color to plot this as income goes up what happens to g minus t so as income goes up the government deficit will generally go down so g minus t goes down what about the trade surplus if incomes are higher people will be spending more money imports go up so x minus m also goes down so what that means is that the sum of these two will go down as income goes up so here we have the graph for g minus t plus x minus m as y increases the intersection of these two graphs represents our equilibrium level of uh, income versus um, so equilibrium level of income let's just say for simplicity that that is 10 and let us assume that initially when we have this equilibrium the real interest rate is equal to 5% then for some reason the interest rate goes down so let's say now that the new interest rate is 5% if the new interest rate now has i'm sorry so interest rate was 5% now let's say that the interest rate goes down to 4% so if the interest rate has gone down what will happen to savings and investment the savings will go down because with interest rates lower people will invest or save less 
what about business investment so as far as businesses are concerned they will invest more because their cost of capital has decreased so what happens to s minus i this overall s minus i will go down and effectively what's going to happen over here is for a given level of income s minus i will shift so it will shift to the right or downwards and then our equilibrium level of income is going to go up let's say to 12 and this now allows us to create our is curve and essentially the is curve plots the real interest rate versus income overall income and what we have noticed here is when the interest rate was 5 percent the income was 10 and when we have a lower real interest rate of let's say 4 percent then the income goes up to 12 so that shows that our is curve is downward sloping to summarize very quickly the is curve shows the relationship between real interest rate and overall income with this assumption that your aggregate income is equal to aggregate expenditure now that we've understood the is curve let's focus on the lm curve with the lm curve we make an assumption that we must hold the real money supply constant and then to derive the lm curve we set the real money supply equal to real money demand to derive the lm curve let's start with the quantity of money theory which states that the which states that mv is equal to p times y now recall from the lecture on monetary policy and money that m stands for your nominal money supply v is the velocity which stands for how often money is used to make purchases p is the price level and y is our real gdp or real output now essentially what this relationship is, so, is showing is that our real money which is m divided by p so that's our nominal money supply divided by price level is directly proportional to the real output so we can say that our real money is proportional to real output we can also sh uh, uh, logically show that the real money is indirectly related to one over the or we can say that this is uh, the real money is inversely proportional to interest rates or more specifically the the demand for money is inversely proportional to interest rates why is that obviously if interest rates are high so when when interest rates are high that means we are better off investing money in stocks and bonds so our demand for real money so our demand for money will be lower and if interest rates are relatively low then our demand for money will be high so that shows that there is an inverse relationship between interest rates and the demand for money now going back to our basic assumption that if we must hold money supply constant and set real money supply equal to real money demand so essentially we are holding this constant if this is constant then that can only happen if y is positively related with r so essentially we are showing that if we hold this if this condition is true then the income has a positive relationship or is proportional with interest rate so if income goes up then interest rates go up and effectively then we can create our lm curve which shows the relationship between real interest rates and overall income and as we've just shown this is a positive relationship so the lm curve is upward sloping 
Now, let's say that this is the LM curve for a certain amount of real money. So real money, as we've just seen, is defined as your nominal money divided by price level. Let's say that for simplicity, this is currently equal to 100. Now, what happens if there is a increase in real money, which can either happen because price levels have gone down or your nominal money supply goes up. So if there is a increase in money supply, all that happens is that the LM curve will shift to the right. So you will have this new LM curve where let's say new money supply or, or uh, real money is now 120. So if we increase our real money, then the LM curve shifts to the right. As long as we are along a given LM curve, that's where we are holding our real money supply constant. So hopefully that makes sense. As we've seen over and over in economics, when you move along a curve, only, only things that change are uh, what you see on the X and Y axis, which are real interest rate and Y. And when something other than these two variables change, then the curve shifts. And in this particular example, we have uh, to move along the curve, we keep real money supply constant. If real money supply changes as it does in this simplistic example, then the LM curve shifts. As a quick summary, LM curve shows the relationship between real interest rate and your overall uh, GDP or income. Now that we've understood our IS curve and our LM curve, we are going to look at how these two can be used to derive or create the aggregate demand curve. What we are showing over here is both the IS curves and the LM curves. So let's say initially we are at this point A. Now this is showing us our equilibrium level where IS intersects with LM. So at, at this point A, let's say we have a certain income Y1 and we have a certain level of interest rate, let's say 4%. When the, and then, so, and then let's say that at A, the price levels are, the price level is equal to P1. Now what happens if the price level increases to P2, so price level becomes P2, which is, let's say, greater than the original price level of P1. What happens to the LM curve? If you recall earlier, with, as long as we move along the LM curve, real money must be constant. Real money is defined as M over P. In this case, we have changed P. So P has, the price level has increased, which means that real money has decreased, which means that LM must shift to the left. When LM shifts to the left, our new equilibrium point is B. So with B, obviously we then have a new interest rate, which is a higher interest rate. So we now see that there is this higher interest rate of 5%. Now, in terms of creating the aggregate demand curve, with the aggregate demand curve, as you might recall, the x-axis is your income, or often shown as y, and the y-axis is price levels. So when we were at point A, our income was y1, and our price level was P1. And as we increased the price level, what happens, uh, so when we increase the price level, the new, the new equilibrium point is now at Y2. So increasing the price level meant that real money went down, which meant that LM shifted to the left. And we now have a new income level of Y2 which is less than Y1. So that corresponds to this point over here. So at a higher price level of P2, we now have, we are now at point B, which is at a lower value of Y. 
i e y two. So that shows that uh, that shows why our aggregate demand curve has a negative slope. And hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Now, in terms of uh, the sort of questions you might get, and these uh, some of these are mentioned at the end of this reading. What happens if there is a increase in money supply? Which of these curves will shift? So, as we've seen up here, if there is an increase in money supply, that means that M uh, increases. If M increases, there is an increase in uh, your real money. When there is an increase in real money, the curve shifts. The LM will shift to the right and if the LM shifts to the right based on the relationship that we've just seen, the aggregate demand curve will also shift to the right. What if there is an increase in price level? Then as we saw earlier, if there's an increase in price level, then your LM curve will shift to the left. If you found this clip interesting and informative, please visit my website www.rfirfanullah.com Here you will find a tremendous amount of useful material right here in the 2011 CFA video lecture series you will find the entire level 1 curriculum for free and most of the material here is still relevant so this is worth looking at the 2012 video lecture series covers both level 1 and level 2. These lectures are available for a fee. And uh, finally, down here, uh, financial management at IBA. Here you will find my lectures at IBA uh, for a course on financial management. Plus you will find lots of useful spreadsheets that can help you with financial modeling. So again, please visit www.rfirfanullah.com Thank you.